Well guys, the moment we waited for finally occurred. On September 28, 2019, Elon Musk gave his highly anticipated Starship update. The presentation took place outdoors under the beautiful Boca Chica sky on a particularly windy night. Elon mentioned that there were two elements to this Starship presentation. The first purpose of the presentation was to inspire the public and get people excited about the future, and the second purpose was to unveil the current progress SpaceX has had with Starship so far. Incredible, inspiring, achieving the impossible. The moment was quite inspiring to watch. Seeing Elon stand next to Starship Mark 1 and Falcon 1 by contrast on SpaceX's live stream just really put things into perspective on just how far SpaceX has gone since its founding in 2002, 17 years ago, to the first time SpaceX reached orbit in 2008, to the progress we see happening with SpaceX right now. SpaceX is really at a critical moment in the company's history. We're also at a tipping point in human history where we're sort of at the cusp of becoming a multi-planetary species. As Elon rightly states, there's something about the vision that makes you feel super excited about the future. There's sort of an infectious energy around SpaceX and Starship right now that's very reminiscent to the early days of the space program. For one, SpaceX is really inspiring the next generation of rocket scientists, engineers, and space enthusiasts and really just anyone interested in advanced technology and the future of humanity. Back in 2016, when Elon first unveiled an early concept of Starship to the public, then called the Interplanetary Transport System, he outlined four key factors that were absolutely necessary in reducing the cost to Mars. These four factors were making the vehicle fully reusable, refilling in orbit, producing propellant on Mars, and choosing the right propellant. These four factors have greatly influenced the overall design of Starship and Super Heavy over the years. Particularly, they have influenced the design of Starship. As I've mentioned, in previous videos, Starship is an incredibly versatile vehicle that has to perform a number of functions. It has to take off from Earth, survive the trip to Mars, land on Mars, take off from Mars, and return to Earth safely, and again, be economically viable and reusable. At all the Starship presentations so far, that's been the main question SpaceX has been answering. How does SpaceX create an economically viable ship capable of performing all those functions safely? 2019 Starship Design Elements Since the presentation in 2016 to now, 2019, SpaceX has really taken a giant leap in terms of Starship and Super Heavy. Elon's presentation on the 28 highlighted some of the critical design changes that the company has chosen to pursue in order to reduce the cost of getting to Mars while having a ship that is able to perform all the versatile functions I mentioned previously. Here are the six elements of Starship's design that Elon discussed at the Starship update. Rapidly reusable rocket, how Starship enters an atmosphere and lands, heat shielding, stainless steel design, Raptor engines, and orbital refilling. Let's take a quick look at each of them. Rapidly reusable rocket. Reusability has always been a key part of SpaceX's goals. In order to have a sustainable and economically viable vehicle capable of taking humans on multiple trips to the Red Planet, it has to be fully reusable. Elon has been highlighting reusability since SpaceX's inception. SpaceX has moved from testing reusability on Grasshopper to the changes we see on Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy today. Starship will be a fully reusable vehicle. According to Elon, a rapidly reusable rocket is the critical breakthrough to making life multiplanetary. How Starship enters an atmosphere and lands. In his 2018 Starship update, Elon first unveiled a simulation of how Starship would function during re-entry. This is an important concept. In order to be fully reusable and ensure astronaut safety, Starship has to maintain its structural integrity when entering an atmosphere and landing. In the 2019 update, we got some new simulations of how exactly Starship would slow down during re-entry and perform propulsive landing. The forward and rear fins on Starship provide additional drag. There is also a degree of lift provided by the fins in the upper atmosphere or the low density portion of the atmosphere which helps to control the max heating rate and burn off velocity. The actuation of the fins on Starship enable a control fall. Combination of 3-in-1 stainless steel and hexagonal ceramic tiles. When discussing re-entry, a critical design element that comes into play is heat shielding. Elon also gave some more details on the hexagonal ceramic tiles that will be used on Starship. 
According to Elon, the tiles are very light but crack resistant. Elon also highlighted how the combination of the stainless steel structure of Starship and the tiles actually work together. It was at this point in the presentation where Elon basically raved about the design decision of stainless steel. 301 Stainless Steel – The Best Starship Design Decision According to Elon, the decision to use stainless steel was the best design decision on Starship so far. There are a number of advantages of stainless steel in terms of Starship's design. 301 Stainless Steel is stronger at cryogenic temperatures. At cryogenic temperatures, for one, 301 Stainless Steel has about the same strength as an advanced composite carbon fiber or aluminum lithium. High Melting Point Another advantage of stainless steel Elon highlighted was its high melting temperature. During atmospheric entry, Starship can become extremely hot, so the high melting point of the vehicle ensures that it doesn't melt or start falling apart due to extreme temperatures. Due to the high melting point of stainless steel, heat shielding is only required on the windward side or hot side of Starship. Elon also went on to state that due to the thermal properties of the steel, the thickness of the tiles needed would be significantly reduced. This probably gives a significant cost saving and just reduces complexity in terms of the tiles. Speaking of costs, stainless steel is also drastically less expensive than carbon fiber. Carbon fiber costs about 130,000 a ton, while stainless steel costs about 2,500 a ton. Starship is a significantly large ship, so the cost savings is a significant advantage. With that size of vehicle, things can start to scale pretty quickly. Starship Stats Starship will measure 9 meters in diameter and around 50 meters in height. The ship has a dry mass of 120 tons. According to SpaceX's website, the Starship payload fairing is 9 meters in diameter and approximately 19 meters high, resulting in the largest usable payload volume of any current launcher. In terms of Raptor engines on Starship, from Elon's update, we now see that there are three sea level engines and three vacuum engines. The three sea level engines are mounted on Starship Mark 1 right now. The three sea level engines can gimbal about 15 degrees. They steer the ship. The vacuum engines are static. Elon also touched on the concept of refueling. SpaceX is leveraging lessons learned in docking with the space station and applying it to Starship refueling. There's a lot more that we could expect to see in terms of refueling and technology demonstrations in the future with Starship. Elon also unveils some new details about Super Heavy's design. In watching the progress on Mark 1 and Mark 2 in Boca Chica and Coco respectively, we got a lot of insights on what the new design of Starship might look like. But until Elon's presentation, we were lacking new details about Super Heavy. Super Heavy will now employ as many as 37 Raptor engines. According to Elon, that number is still sort of in flux, but the booster is designed to add and remove engines as necessary. Super Heavy will stand at 68 meters tall. This will bring the full stack height to 118 meters tall. There are six landing legs on Super Heavy. Over time, SpaceX is aiming for a 7,500 ton force rocket on a 5,000 ton gross liftoff mass, so a 1.5 thrust to weight ratio. How was SpaceX able to do all this so fast? There's something to be learned from SpaceX's rapid pace of innovation. In just under five months, the company managed to complete Starship Mark 1 for display, not to mention that the company completed all of its construction outside in almost full view of the public. That's practically unprecedented in the era space industry. So how does SpaceX do this so fast? The exponential rate of innovation and Elon's management philosophies. Elon calls his approach management by rhyming. His words, not mine. If the schedule's long, it's wrong. If it's tight, it's right. It's an approach of learning while doing. Rapidly prototyping, evaluating lessons learned, and rapidly implementing design changes in the future. It's a recursive improvement on schedule. Elon also seems to have an increased focus on simplicity once it works. According to Elon, the best part is no part. The best process is no process. He mentioned that the thing that he's most impressed with at design meetings at SpaceX is what the team undesigned that day. Everything should be as simple as possible, but not simpler. Timelines and exponential progress. From lessons learned with the development of Mark 1, SpaceX plans to implement an accelerated timeline, rather an exponential timeline with future versions of Starship. Elon currently estimates that Mark 2 will be built within a couple of months or less, Mark 3 in 3 months and Mark 4 in 4-5 four to five months. That's just a crazy rate of production. I can't quite tell if these timelines are Elon time or actual time, or if Elon time is starting to align itself with actual time or what, but that SpaceX is 
projections so far. The first test of Mark 1 is scheduled for about 1 to 2 months from now, so sometime, maybe in November. Elon estimates that the first orbital launch of a Starship prototype could happen in 6 months, possibly with Mark 4 or Mark 5. 6 months takes us to about late March or early April 2020. That pace, again, just sounds insane. What's even more insane is that according to Elon, less than 5% of the company's resources are focused on Starship. The majority of the company's resources are on Dragon and Falcon, especially Crew Dragon. More on SpaceX's developments with Crew Dragon in another video. What SpaceX has been able to do in the past few months in terms of the development of Mark 1 has been impressive. Looking at this image of Mark 1's stainless steel structure against the backdrop of the starry sky just really puts into perspective what SpaceX is trying to accomplish. SpaceX timelines right now are really aggressive. A 20km test of Mark 1 is scheduled to take place in a month or two. A new prototype is expected to be rolled out every 1-2 to two months. An orbital launch is projected for 6 months from now. SpaceX has previously projected a commercial launch of Starship as early as 2021, a cargo mission to Mars in 2022, a trip around the moon in 2023, and a crewed mission to Mars in 2024. Many still have their doubts about whether these timeframes are possible. Despite that, SpaceX is pushing forward, relentlessly pursuing the goal to make human beings a multi-planetary species, to build bases on the moon and colonies on Mars, and even take us beyond those points. SpaceX has a lot of work to do in the coming months, and there are still a lot of questions that the company has to answer. For now though, we seem to be at a potential tipping point in the history of humanity, an early stage where we're laying the foundations for our future among the stars.